All right, let's make sure that everybody is in. All right. And we are good. All right, welcome to Cooking Wild Game Cuisine with Christy Crabtree and brought to you by the Nevada Department of Wildlife. My name is Dawn Anderson and I am the Hunter Education and Archery Education Coordinator for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. And I am super stoked and pumped to welcome Christy Crabtree and her technical assistant, Andy. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do a couple introductions, just a welcome, and then we're gonna set Christy loose. So from the girl who met a hunter and became one herself, Christy has found great success with creating game recipes that she turned into a career. From the founder of Nevada Foodies, Christy has produced an, an amazing, yummy collection of game recipes in her Wild Game Cuisine Cookbook. Let's welcome her today while she shares with us three recipes from her kitchen to yours. Thanks, Dawn. <laughs> You're welcome. And then what? let's see, I got one page and then we'll get you, we'll get you going. Okay. All right, so thank you for joining us today. This is a family-friendly program and it's rated PG. Profanity and inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated in the chat or the Q&A. All questions in the chat box or the Q&A, the chat box, chat box should be disabled. So use the Q&A. I will answer questions and direct them to Christy in between each recipe. I will also share links for her cookbooks and her websites as well. <laughs> So our agenda today, some Tuscan inspired elk soup, and I'm gonna let her take the floor here in a minute. Tuck and roll steaks, stuffed poblano. Am I saying that right? Poblano? Yes. Okay. Um, any questions again, drop them in the Q&A box and I will answer them and Christy will answer them in between, question, in between the recipes. Following this webinar, you will receive a link to a survey. We encourage you to fill this survey out. Your feedback is critical and let us know what you'd like to see more of. If you'd like to see more of Christy's recipes or if there's other topics you'd like us to cover, go ahead and drop them in that survey at the end. Otherwise, I'm going to stop sharing and Christy has the floor. Is that, is that working? Can you see me okay? I can see you. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I hope it's not that echoey in here. If you hear any dogs whining, um, that's due to COVID. I have two short hairs that are uh, very spoiled now since we've been working at home since March. Um, so I'm going to get started because we have three recipes to make. Um, some of my favorites, some of the simplest ways to really enjoy some of the wild game. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is a, a Tuscan inspired elk soup. Um, and if you like Olive Garden, you kind of think about that, that milky soup with the sausage, the potatoes, the kale. Um, but this is going to be a lighter version. So what I did was I took about a pound and a half of elk sirloin steak and cut them into small bite-sized pieces. And the easiest thing that you can do with this is all we're going to do is we're going to put some salt and pepper on them. And then we're going to throw them into the pot with a little bit of olive oil and um, brown them. And if you want, you can flour them, but I prefer to just kind of keep it nice and organic and natural. So I'm just gonna season them a little bit with a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper, and then I'm gonna throw some oil into the pan. We just want to brown the meat um, on all sides as fast as we can. And then once we do that, we're going to take one sweet chopped onion and we're gonna add that to the pan as well. So I'm gonna put this meat in here and hopefully it's hot. This is my first Zoom meeting for cooking, by the way. So hopefully everything goes smooth. I tried to prep everything last night, so it would be super simple. You wanna hear that sizzle before you put the meat in because you want a nice brown edge on all the cubed meat. And this should only take a few minutes. And then once we get everything brown, we'll throw the onion in. So we'll put all this in here. And don't stir it right away, just let it get a nice brown sizzle on the outer edge. So we'll leave that in there for a minute. And while that is browning, I am going to cut up 
one garlic clove. And all the onions and the garlic that I'm using today, as well as, well as the kale, um, everything that we grow out in the backyard in the garden. I'm a huge, uh, a huge fan of bringing not only the field to the table, but also harvesting some of the food that we add with the organic meat that we bring home. Um, the elk I'm using right now is a cow elk that we uh, got a few years ago. So I'm pretty stingy with my meat. Even though we eat it every day, I just make sure that uh, we have enough to get us through until we draw the next tag. So with that sizzling in there, I'll take a spoon and just kind of turn them over and get the other side brown. You guys can probably hear that sizzling. And like I said, this is a, a super simple soup. So all we're gonna do is have elk, onions, garlic. We're gonna chop up some sweet potato because it'll add a certain sweetness to the, the broth and to the soup itself. And then towards the end, we'll add the kale. And then what we'll do is we'll let it simmer on low for an hour. And then once it's done and we serve it in the bowl, you'll take a big spoonful of it, put it in the bowl. And this is my favorite part is that you put a little lemon zest on top of the soup, delicious, and a little Parmesan cheese. So since the meat is browning, I'm gonna add the onion. I want the onion to sweat a little bit and soften up. And he's giving me the key to smile more and relax. So, like I said, first time. So we're gonna put that in there. I like to put the lid on just to help sweat the onions a little faster. And I've got this on probably a medium high heat right now just to get that meat to brown faster. I'm throwing my stuff over here, get it out of the way so you can see everything. So sweet potatoes, my favorite because they don't get mushy. Um, they're, they're so much better than a regular potato. And they're pretty easy to find at the grocery store. And so what I'll usually do is just peel. So while all this is cooking, I keep working to make sure everything can be done in a certain time period and put the soup on. And like I said, it takes about an hour for all those flavors to melt. I don't add a lot of salt to anything until towards the end because I'd like to see what all of the flavors combined create. And then you can add your own salt to taste later. Not to mention, I like to stay low on my sodium, not retain water, the girl thing, and an age thing. We'll throw all this away. And then the sweet potato, I like to chunk them. So that way they're bite-sized pieces in your soup. So I'll just take this, usually I'll cut it down the center, cut it again, so you make four quarters. I'm trying to remember smile. And then just cut them again into small bite-sized chunks. And so we'll add this here in a few minutes. And you can add as many potatoes as you want to, um, just depending on how many people you're serving. This will usually serve probably four to six people. Um, and then it freezes great too, if you wanna freeze it and then reheat it later on. So that works out really well. And check my onions and my meat. Oh, that looks good. So once those onions and the meat are brown and the onions are softened, we'll add my garlic, which I lost my garlic somewhere. It's probably under my potatoes, but you'll add the garlic in there. And then what you'll do is you'll take your broth and you'll add your broth to the stock, the stock pot. like that. And then what I usually do is I'll let it sit and simmer on low. I'll reduce the heat, simmer it to low for a few minutes, and then I'll add the potatoes 
And then the potatoes take probably about 15 minutes to soften up. And then once the potatoes are soft, then you can add your kale to the soup as well. And then let it simmer for, like I said, about an hour. So because we're on a, a crunch of time for cooking two other meals, I am going to stick the potatoes in there now. Hopefully the phone is not open. It's somewhere in here. It was a small little clove. <laughs> so put all that in there. And I'm just gonna wait for the kale and I'll put the kale in in a few minutes. And I'm gonna move this pot over to my other stove and put it on low and then bring it back and then we'll add the kale here in a few minutes. Move this off of there. Put it over here. Turn this on low. Let that go. So, and that's about as easy as it is. And so after that hour, oh, one more thing, bay leaves. Sorry about that. Throw a couple of bay leaves in there. And then let, let that cook for an hour. And so you're good to go. That was as fast and simple of a soup that you can make. And it's absolutely delicious once you add the lemon zest to it and a little Parmesan cheese. So let me move this out of the way and I will get to the next. You make that look, you make that look so easy. I made it look so what? So easy. Well, it is. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing is that wild game being organic as such, you should enjoy it for what it is and for the flavor that it brings out. So that's why you don't add too many spices or too much salt until you actually can taste it towards the end. And then you can adjust your seasonings once uh, once you uh, plate it and get it ready to serve. Good stuff. <laughs> if any of the ladies here have any experience with cooking big game, if you guys want to put it in the question and answer box, I'm kind of interested. All right, let me move this stuff. I tried to make sure that this was as easy and smooth as possible. So my next thing is I love when we get an elk or a deer um, or a pronghorn antelope is making sure when we butcher it ourselves that we keep the meat as, as large as possible. So all the roasts, we don't overcut um, individual steaks, things like that most of the time, because I, from my experiences, when you have like a five pound bottom round roast from a cow elk, I can create so many different meals from just that one big portion of meat. So what I like to do is like the soup there, part of that was from a five pound bottom, bottom, bottom round roast. So I cube some of that up um, to make a soup. And then what I also like to do is I also like to take another piece of that meat and I like to create thin strips and cut thin strips while it's semi defrosted is the easiest way to do it, to go about doing it. And I like to use a fish blade knife because of the long blade they come in 12, 14 inches blades, but they can make the cleanest, longest slice through the meat without um, actually putting a hole or puncturing. And you can also get one of those little gloves if you feel kind of scared cutting that close. I haven't cut myself yet. I burn myself all the time, but I don't cut myself so far. So what I did too is I, I took a lot of these things. I like, for some reason, I'm totally addicted to stuffing and rolling meat right now because the options are limitless. limitless. You can put so many different ingredients into, into a piece of meat, um, season it, cook it on a skillet, skillet, put it on the barbecue, put it on the Traeger, and then cook it. And then you can slice thin strips of it. And then you can taste all those flavors um, from all the ingredients within that meat. So it's just options, um, inspirational options that you can use. So you just don't have to think about always putting a steak on a barbecue and that's why you're coming for dinner. So with this recipe, this is my tuck and roll elk recipe, which is kind of fun. It's a one skillet recipe. So I'm gonna use one skillet, put it on here, get it hot. And it's fun. You need a little butcher's twine. And you can get that on Amazon or your local grocery store. 
And I've already kind of pre-cut strips for tying the meat. So what I wanna do, first of all, is I wanna make the stuffing. So this is an easy stuffing. I grow a lot of shallots out in the backyard. So I love the smell. I chopped these yesterday, otherwise I would be crying right now, which would not be fun. So I have a bowl. I'm gonna add some shallots, chopped finely. And then I'm gonna add some chopped parsley. I like to use the flat leaf parsley, parsley instead of the curly parsley. And I finally chopped this parsley. So we're gonna to toss this in here as well. And then you can add just a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of pepper. And then the fun part is I, I wanna add a lot of garlic. So I'm gonna take some more garlic that we grew last year. And we store them in our closet and boxes and it seems to last for a good nine months. Or we'll pickle it and then just wash them off because that'll store for at least a year. So I'm just gonna finally chop this garlic. We use a couple of cloves, depending on the size. It's always good to have several different types of blades and knives in your kitchen for doing certain things like chopping. So we'll just throw a couple of cloves in here. And if you want to get your garlic a little bit smoother, you can throw a little pinch of salt on the garlic itself. Kosher salt's the best. And then you can take the side of your knife and then you can just press it flat. And what that does is it kind of presses some of the oil out of the garlic and smashes it into a paste. And what you'll do is kind of scoop that up and then throw it in your bowl. So I've got the parsley, um, the shallots, the garlic, and then what I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of olive oil. And you're not going to use very much of this when you do the rolls. And you'll just stir this together. And it's almost like a, a raw chimichurri. You'll stir that together. And then what you're going to do, set this aside, Put this over here, is you're gonna take a few slices of your steak and you're gonna lay it flat and you can season it with just a little pinch of salt and pepper. And then you're gonna take this stuffing or chimichurri stuffing and you're just gonna kind of put a little bit of it on the meat itself. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. And then you're gonna take one end of the meat and you're just gonna roll it into a little tiny meat roll. And then take a piece of butcher's twine. And I think I have my scissors somewhere. And just, and it's, it's kind of for display purposes. You know, I mean, this is, you, you worked hard getting this meat. So it's kind of fun to make something culinary looking such as an, elk roll, and then just trim off the edges, and then continue to do the same thing with the rest of the steaks that you have. So again, just take the steak, little pinch of salt and pepper, little stuffing, and then roll. Hey, Christy. Yeah. What cut of meat is that that you're using for the stuffed recipe again? So I took a five pound um, bottom round from my cow elk. Like I said, five pounds of meat gives you a whole lot of options for what you can make for dinner. I guess depending on your family size too. 
I mean, they're just nice, huge, good looking slabs of red meat. Um, I've done the same thing with venison as well. Pronghorn, it's been, a, it's been a few years because we haven't drawn a tag, but hopefully this year. And hopefully everybody on here puts in for tags and gets as lucky to draw. I figured doing this class probably gives us a little bit of good juju, right? So we can draw. Keep going. This is like the boring part. You guys watch me roll milk. Elk sticks out. I think we all need good jujus when it comes to drawing tags. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're spreading your good jujus with the recipes here. And we Especially all here in Nevada, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so we have some great wildlife. Nothing beats a sunset or a sunrise here in Nevada, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just gonna do two more. Like I said, this is a one skillet meal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flour these lightly and I'm gonna throw them in the skillet with a little olive oil, a little butter, brown them. And then we're gonna add some beef stock to it with some uh, orzo pasta. And so what that'll do is that will, by the time that orzo pasta cooks up in the broth, the meat will be cooked and tender. And then you can pull the meat out and individually serve each roll to somebody, or you can slice each one and then serve the sliced pieces along with the cooked orzo pasta. And if you don't wanna use orzo, you can use rice or wild rice, or you don't have to use any starchy, starchy additive. You can just make meat rolls. All right, finish this one up. Hey, Christy, could you use coconut flour instead of regular flour? Have you tried You could, that? I'm using wheat flour, a, a nice wheat flour. You could definitely do coconut flour. You can use coconut oil too to help brown everything. Oh, I have one left, all right. Thai. Last one and last bit of my stuffing. And I use um, a couple of large shallots for this and then maybe a quarter of a cup of uh, chopped parsley and a few tablespoons of olive oil. And that'll just hold that moisture in the steak. Andy's cueing me to smile more. All right. So we've got all of our little steak roll ups all lined up. Throw all this to get this out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of butter, maybe a tablespoon of butter, along with some olive oil in the skillet. Get that hotter. Put that in there. Oh, good, that is hot. Just a little bit of olive oil. Get that moved around. And this is a nonstick skillet that I'm using. Get that nice and hot. All right, so I'm going to take my flour and I just put it in the paper plate, it's easier. One less dish to clean because that's what I'll be doing today after this, doing the dishes. So take each elk roll up or venison, whichever one you want to use, and just a light dusting. It, you know, and you don't even have to flour these if you don't want to, but this just gives it a little bit more of a bite to it, a little crustier edge. So just light. Stick that in there, turn this up so it starts to sizzle. And it just takes a few minutes on each side. You just want to roll them around, brown them up. Okay. 
see if this gets hotter. This is a new gadget I just bought, so it's not the same as gas. Gas is a lot faster. Put that in there. Noreen, Noreen. and I have something in common. We love watching you cook. <laughs> <laughs> And then Lynn says that you are doing a fantastic job. Oh God, thank you. I need that positive reinforcement. It's different when you cook all by yourself and nobody's around watching you than having people watch you do this. So I said I could never be a chef on TV because if I cut onions, my eyes just flood. So it's terrible. Like Annie walked in the other day, I was cutting up onions and I had just tissues stuck underneath my mascara to make sure that uh, I got, I got it all caught, so it's pretty funny. <laughs> you always do it for us. That over there. So my skillet is apparently taking forever to get hot, but once it gets hot, then you just take some tongs and then you'll just turn them. And I usually do like three turns. So it's cooking on one side, turn them on another side and then turn them one more time. So if you had gas or a hotter stove, it'd probably take maybe a minute per side for turning and browning um, because these are so thin. I cut them probably about more thicker than a half an inch because a half an inch is pretty thin. So, and not, not a half an inch, but just in between the half quarter inch um, for the thickness. So that way it would cook fast. And like I said, I usually throw in um, a couple of words of pasta once these brown, and then I'll throw in some beef stock um, just to probably right underneath the top the tops of each of the rounds of the elk steak rounds. And now, I, now I'm starting to hear a sizzle. So we'll let that cook just a little bit longer. Open up my beef stock. You can make bone broth too, but that, that is time, time consuming. So I'm just gonna cheat and use beef stock from the store. Let me check this really quick. Oh, those are looking yummy. Just simple things. And you just want, like I said, just a little brown. I don't know if you can see that as well, but you just want it to get a little bit brown on the edge um, and then roll them. And you can fill these with, you don't have to use something like I did with a chimichurri. You could actually probably put like cheese in it or a little, maybe a thin slice of prosciutto. Um, maybe saute up some mushrooms, a little parsley, a little onion, um, but make it really fine. And then just layer that on and then just tuck and roll the meat and then just tie them up and let them cook. And they're like mini roulades, mini cooked roulades, bite size. And I'll just turn that. Oh, those look yummy. So we're gonna have a lot to eat this afternoon. I think we'll feed the neighborhood. And well, I, was, I was thinking that maybe um, on the contact page, you know, we can just have everybody email you and, and get your address and everybody's coming over for dinner tonight. I can't hear you, Don. <laughs> you can't hear what, me? Oh, what'd you say? I said, well, I figured when we have that contact page going, we'll just have everybody email you and ask for your address and then everybody would come over for dinner tonight. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. That would help. Thank you for turning up the volume. Keep going, keep going. And he's helping me turn up the volume. There we go. Now I'll be able to hear you. We're missing out on the smells in your kitchen right now. Well, it smells really, really good, by the way. The garlic and onions. And so I'm just gonna turn for that third turn. Let that go. Make sure all the flowers browned up. So there's butter and olive oil in the pan, the skillet, and I got those onions. You can smell the shallots and you can smell that little bit of garlic in there. It smells pretty good. Mm. And so once those get going, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this orzo pasta in here and have the orzo get a little brown as well um, in the butter and the oil. And then you just kind of pour it in between the meat. And I've done this too on the Traeger. I mean, if you like cooking outside as much as I do, 
because it keeps me from having to clean the stove or the kitchen more often. Um, you can cook this on the Traeger too if you want, just put it at a high heat, ground those little roulades, um, but do it in the cast iron skillet. And then you can do the same thing, throw that orzo pasta in there or whatever you want to use rice and then add a little bit of stock. And what that'll do is that'll, like I said, that'll cook that orzo pasta. At the same time, your, your tuck and roll elk steaks are simmering in all this flavor. And another thing that I've done too is um, actually gotten a thing of the dry soup mix, the onion soup mix, and then mix that in with water and then put that in here too, just to give it more of an oniony flavor. So that works out really well as well. And so then you just put this on simmer and then it takes probably about 20 minutes for this pasta to cook up in the sauce and then dinner's ready. And then you can just serve it, serve it as is, like I said, or take them out cut them up individually and then put it all back into the pasta, into the orzo, and then just mix that in and then um, go from there. And I use orzo pasta because it's smaller grain pasta. So it makes me feel, makes me feel like I'm not taking in as many carbs as if I was to use spaghetti noodles. So, and that's that. And then you can always garnish like I like to do just to make things look good. If you follow me on Instagram or have gone to my website, Nevada Foodies, you know that everything looks good when you put a little green and a little garnishment um, when you serve your food. So a lot of times I'll do that as well to add to, add to the, the, the look and the feel of the food that you're gonna eat. So, so that was dish number two. Noreen says that her boyfriend makes broth every year and it's amazing in soup, stew, meatloaf and gravy. And like you said, it's easy to freeze. I've seen, I've seen his, his garage. He's, he's, I'm sure he's, he makes a lot of good bone broth from all of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I absolutely love how real you are. The lost garlic, the sound, this is how I cook too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all relate here. Oh, I know. I don't know how people on TV do it. And they make it look so easy. It's like, shoot, where'd that go? You know? So yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And he enjoys it too, because he gets to eat really well every night. Very well. So, and game is all we eat. I mean, at least we, that's all we try to eat. Um, it's one of my favorite foods and I, you know, I, I can't do beef that much anymore because it's just too fatty. Um, tends to give me a little bit of heartburn. Uh, chicken, you know, it's, I saw that Netflix show where all the chickens are all grouped up together. So I can't do chicken anymore because I just feel so bad for them. So, so wild game is it. All right. Let's see, what else are we doing? So that was, like I said, super easy to, to really, you know, whip up something different for dinner um, using wild game. Why did I use that? Oh, the other thing, I am just moving along here, Dawn. You are doing fabulous with time. I think it's because I had everything so prepped last night. I did really well. You go girl. We got poblano peppers next, right? Is that what's going down? Yeah, super easy. I guess maybe I should have done four meals. We could have probably squeezed in four. We were worried about time. I know. All right, so let me get set up with this. I'm gonna move these little uh, tuck and roll steak bites. I don't know if you guys, well, uh, I guess if I pour this down and I'll probably pour it all over the counter. So I'll put this on the stove over here and see if I can get this puffed up before we're done. So you can see the finished product. I think your kitchen looks like mine too every time I cook. <laughs> Healthy, dirty with a ton of stuff everywhere. Just stuff everywhere. <laughs> you should see my other kitchen. Two kitchens. Yeah. Serious. I like to cook. <laughs> I saw your Traeger collection out there too. I was a little jealous. You have a you have at least one up on me. Yes, I have two Traegers and uh, a Weber barbecue, a charcoal barbecue. I mean, because you never know what mood you're in and what you want to make. And every one, every tool has a different outcome and a different flavor that it adds. So, oh, two camp chefs, yeah. Oh, yeah, we like the camp chefs. The camp chefs my favorite, though, for cooking outside. 
because I always do like high heat foods outside that are gonna spark butter or oil all over the place. Um, so that way it saves me from having to clean the stove. All right, so this recipe, again, in all these recipes, you can use elk, you can use venison, you can use antelope. I mean, there's really, there's really not a wrong way to cook with this. I mean, these are just ideas on things that you can do. This is, uh, I'm gonna say this is ground antelope. I'm a chunky grind girl. So when we process using our meat processor back here, I'm a big, what is it, what is it called? I forget now. The blade, yeah. Yeah, so instead of more of a fine meat, Andy's more fine, I'm more chunky because I just like all the chunky pieces in it. And a lot of our, a lot of our grinds, um, we do probably the ratio of the 20, 20, 80 grind. Um, so I'll go to the store or to the butcher and get, you know, 20% beef fat. We've done pork fat as well, which is good. Um, we've used bacon ends, which is awesome because who doesn't love bacon? But then again, everything tastes like bacon. So we kind of moved away from that. And so there's no wrong way to make a grind, um, but we just found that we like, we prefer the beef a little bit better. Um, and I, if, apparently I really like this one because it doesn't add a lot of grease to the pan when you're cooking, which is nice like beef does where you have to drain the fat. So this is good because it just adds a little bit of that flat fat flavor without making a ton of grease in your pan. So. So we're gonna make some stuffed uh, poblano peppers. I gotta get the rest of my stuff, hold on. All right, so this is of course low fat because we're gonna add cream cheese. And I'm gonna, I usually cook these in a cast iron skillet and I'll stick them on the Traeger, I'll stick them in the oven. Grab the rest of my utensils over here. The al pato. You can use other salsa, but this stuff is like crack. So good. So good. I've got some uh, pre-cooked wild rice that I used. So we're going to make a stuffing and then fill these. The cream cheese, of course, whipped is the best. It's easier to fold everything and make the stuffing. So I'm going to take this off. This is the one thing I didn't prep yesterday. So throw all this in there. All right, so let me start with the poblano. So what I did for these is I, I parboil them. So I'll stick these in a big pot of water and I'll parboil them for about five to eight minutes until they get just a little bit soft, but still firm. You can do this recipe using bell peppers if you want to, or you can use Anaheim chili peppers if you can find the really big ones that I think they put on steroids sometimes at the grocery store. And then just parboil them, soften them up a little bit. And then what you wanna do is, I like to use again, the fish fillet knife, just gently cut down the center. And then once, once you boil them, take them out of the water and put them in a cold ice bath in your sink, let them cool down before you touch them and then pull them out. And then you wanna drain them out slice that slice in there, and then pull all of the seeds directly out of the pepper. You can wear gloves if you want to, um, or you can just use your hands, pull those out from the trash, and then wash the pepper off and let them dry. So I already did that so you didn't have to sit there for 10 minutes and watch them boil. So, so what I'm gonna do is I got those prepped, is I'm gonna put the meat in the skillet and I wanna brown this really quickly. And I'm going to add a little bit of onion to it. And then I've got a seasoning mixture that we're going to add to it once the meat's cooked and browned. So a lot of times I'll just throw just a little bit of oil into the skillet to help cook that meat. And I'm using, I've got all sorts of different pans. This pan is a copper plated bottom, bottom pan. It's Sean Tall's. Um, one of my favorite pans ever. I think this is a 12 inch. I don't know if they sell them anymore, but what it does is that copper bottom just really makes everything hot and cooks more evenly and then cools down super fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the meat and this is the way I ground burger is I take little pieces and stick them in the pan. I don't take the whole pound and just throw it in here. I'll stick them in here.
and then I ground that up. And now I'm going to fill it back. And you can tell the difference between the non-stick skillet not getting as hot as that, and this skillet just got really hot. So turn that down. Ground this meat up a little. And I'll let it just sit there, and then I'll, without stirring it all, all the time and just being on top of it, I'll just kind of let it grow a little bit. Get that brown coating um, built up on the bottom. So I'll let that go for a little bit. And while that's cooking, I'll make the stuffing. Okay, this is where I would cook outside on the camp stuff. Another chance to make stuff. Oh, we could just get some of it in there. Smells fabulous. I'm super jealous. I can't smell it. Well, Don, you know where I live. I do. I do. <laughs> I've got seasonings that I always like to keep, and I always buy fresh seasonings. We've got a seasoning store here in uh, in Reno. That allows me to get fresh, um, fresh cumin, coriander, things like that. Um, instead of going to the grocery store and having them have been sit, sitting on the shelves for you know a year or two, the fresh makes a difference too. You know, fresh herbs, fresh everything makes a huge difference difference um, in your food versus the store bought stuff sometimes. So I've got a blend of uh, cumin, coriander, a little kosher salt garlic powder, granulated garlic powder, and uh, Mexican oregano, which is a little bit different than the Greek oregano style. The Greek oregano style is one of my favorites for, for other dishes. Um, but for this one, we're going to use the Mexican. I kind of want to have that Mexican flavor to go along with the guano pepper. What is the name of the spice store? Uh, it's, the spa, it's the Spice and Tea Shop. It's over by Trader Joe's. Uh, they have an amazing collection of every seasoning, spice, herb, uh, salt, pepper that you can think of. So I think I have, in, in the house, I have probably a shelf that's just lined up with packets. So I think I've spent you know, a couple hundred dollars there just for seasonings because they just add, without having to add salt to a lot of food, seasonings you know, can take that place and just, just add the right amount. To, to the food and the flavor. So this is actually starting to brown pretty fast. So what I'm gonna do is I chopped up some onions here, um, just a small sweet, sweet onion. And so I'm just gonna stick this in here too and let it sweat while the meat is cooking. So I'll stir that around, let that go. Turn that back up. And a lot of times, like I said, even with salt, is I won't add the seasonings or the spices to the meat until it's kind of more browned and more cooked through. That way um, I can taste and adjust and see if I need to add more or less um, of, of a lot of things. So let's take a sip of water here. All right, so while that's still cooking, before I add the seasonings, I wanna add um, some of the stuffing. I wanna mix the stuffing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this pre-cooked wild rice and I don't use a lot of it. I just use it because it just kind of thickens, thickens the bite up after it cooks. And then I've got probably a cup of uh, shredded white cheddar cheese here. So I'll add that in. Cause you know that cheesy things are delicious things. And then I've got some chopped cilantro because I just, I love the flavor of fresh cilantro. So I'll add a few tablespoons of cilantro to this as well to the stuffing. So I did the cheese, the rice, the cilantro, and then now you can do some of the cream cheese. So I'm gonna grab a spoon and then I'm gonna take probably a half a cup of cream cheese. Unless you want more, we watch our calories around here. So I'm pretty adamant on control on the fattening portions of things. I like to fit into my pants, especially after COVID. So you just stir this around. Like I said, the whipped cream cheese is so much easier to work with than a hard block of, of cream cheese. And it's just lighter, fluffier. 
And so you've just got a really nice stuffing going on here. And then once this meat is cooked, jack this up just a little bit. See, I lost my temperature go. I did, I did. I so like gas better. So hey, Christy. Easier. Yeah. Can you tell us what the butcher's kitchen impressor is? Oh, can you see it over here? Can you okay. tell us about that? Okay, this is the coolest thing ever. Locally made, okay, BK barbecue over here in Reno. Uh, this is a three in one. So this is the coolest, coolest thing. And everybody needs to own one if you have wild game. So there's three pieces to it. You've got a, a flattening piece. You've got the toothy edge piece. Right. So a lot of times when I think I say I tenderize things or I flatten things, you want to make like elk parmesan or venison parmesan, and you just you want that cubed look in your meat, um, and you want it tenderized. This is the little tool I use, and then this is dangerous. So I always threaten people to talk back to me with this. So this has multiple sharp. Let me see if you can see this. Hold on. This has multiple sharp little teeth. So what he intended this for is if you have large, large pieces of meat that you want to season and you want to get that flavor into the meat, is what you can do is you can rub the meat all over elk, venison, whatever, and then you just stab it with this. And what it does is it penetrates that seasoning deep into the meat um, to help with that flavor. And so it's really cool. And then what it does is you can unscrew this here, and this comes off. There. And then you just take whichever other piece you want to utilize. And if I had any more meat left, and so if you want to tenderize your meat, then you just tenderize both sides of it, turn it over, tenderize it again. If you need to flatten it, you know, if your recipe calls for widening and extending like a roulade. If you took a, if you took a roulade, like a little roast or something like that, like an eye around roast, which is probably about this long on some animals, probably more so on an elk. Um, you could take that and you could cut it, butterfly it open, open it up, and then you can take the flattened piece. And then if you need it to be thinner than a half an inch and then just beat it and then flatten that piece of meat out. Coolest thing ever. Greatest invention. So he sells them at the store. Um, you can you can find them on Amazon as well. But yeah, it's definitely a tool that everybody should have in the kitchen. The three in one. Uh, where did I just put it right here. Butcher's kitchen three in one tenderizing unit. Thank you. Are you gonna let them know I talked about them? <laughs> All right. So my meat's done. So now I'm going to put some of that meat into this cheesy, yummy mixture. But one thing I just forgot is I want to add my seasonings to the meat now. So again, cumin, coriander, a pinch of kosher salt, uh, granulated garlic, and uh, Mexican oregano. All fresh. Smells delicious. I like my basic taco seasoning. It's everything that I use for tacos or fajitas. And then fajitas, maybe I'll just add a little chili powder to that or ancho chili powder. And then stir that in there, get that all seasoned up. Oh, this is gonna be good. All right, and then you take all your cooked meat and you throw it in, well, not throw it in, but you carefully fold it into the cheese stuffing mixture. that on here. Oh, that smells really good. Super good. All right. So then we're just going to fold this all together. And just so you know, I did save a little bit of the shredded cheese because I like to put the cheese on the top of the peppers before I put them in the oven. Throw that over there. And so that hot meat and that whipped cream cheese and all this cheese is just creating this really 
delicious looking stuffing. And if you don't even want to stuff a pepper, you could just mm -hmm. grab a spoon and eat it, eat all this out of the bowl. So I've got this yummy looking stuffing here. So I'm going to set that there. Move my cast iron skillet. And so what I'll do is I'll stuff these peppers and then I'll, uh, I'll cook them either on the Traeger or in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. So let me take one of these pretty peppers. And I did four, and then this is a, about three quarters pound ground. And like I said, if you don't have antelope, you can use venison, you can use ground elk. And then you just stuff as much stuffing as you can get into four, four to six peppers, this will fill. Put all this in here. And if I had a towel, I like to wipe off the side. And then like this, stuffed pepper, throw that in the cast iron skillet. And these things expand pretty good, so you can really you can really put a lot of stuffing in here. So if you wanted to add more rice or more meat or more cheese, you could easily get away with that. Stick that there. Oh, I forgot one thing. See what happens when this is live? El pato. You don't have to use el pato. You can use salsa, whatever your favorite salsa is. Totally too barred on that one, Andy. All right. So let's start again. So add a little el pato. What we'll do is we'll just top these other two. If you forget, if you forget like I did, we'll just top the other two with some of the extra, extra can. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that stuff, but I don't know if they put MSG in it, but it's very addictive. I think we order it by the case around here to have chips and salsa. We'll stuff the rest of this stuff in here. Are you sponsored by El Paso? You would think I should be, huh? <laughs> by the case, I would think so. Can you get that at any store? Where where would you pick that up at? Oh, the El Paso? Yeah, I think I think Walmart and uh, Winco carry it. You can totally get that there or just your local grocery store. I know that um, the green one is located in the Mexican Isle state section. Um, there's a yellow one that's called a tomato salsa, which is hotter than this one, which is more of my favorite one. And that's located for some reason by the tomatoes and the spaghetti sauce. Don't know why, but because it still tastes like salsa. I'll have to ask them. Then. So you just, this one got a little tear in it. A little tear or not, they all taste the same. That's all right. We'll just squeeze that one in there. And if you have extra, you know, because I, I should have stuffed them more, but for time's sake, I'll just leave the, because I'll eat this with a spoon for lunch later on. The stuffing. You're pointing at me for something. What I forget. The time is certainly now. Oh, okay. We're almost at an hour, huh? So we are it. almost at an hour. Hopefully, okay. nobody minds. <laughs> all right. So what you can do is I've got all my peppers in my skillet. Um, if you save a little extra El Pato or you forget like I did, don't worry. You can just pour a little on the top. Plus it adds color, makes it look festive and delicious. And you can do that, throw that on there. Take a little of your shredded cheese, throw that on there as well. And like I said, you're going to bake these um, in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And then if you want to, one of my favorite things is you take an egg 30 minutes in. It's not Andy's favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. You take an egg 30 minutes in. And what you can do is if you just take a spoon and 
push and just make a little bit of a, a pocket in each of the poblanos. Then you can drop an egg in there and then cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes until that egg cooks. And then you can essentially have breakfast for dinner or you can have breakfast or you can have brunch. And that egg is just with all this food that's in here and all this flavor, the meat, the cheese, um, the cilantro, it's just, it's killer. It's absolutely killer. And then I like to serve it with a little bit of a cream or sour cream and a little hot sauce on the side, maybe a little bit more El Pato. And then you can garnish too with just a little bit of a chopped cilantro for added flavor. And some people don't like cilantro. I love it. So then you can just garnish that up. And like I said, you just bake it and you're good to go. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So you can see my peppers. So I'm going to check my soup really quick and see how that's going because it's already been an hour. So what I would do right now is I would take all this kale, which I got from my greenhouse, this kale plant, these plants have been giving us kale for two years now, but they're just about spent. But uh, put about two cups of kale into the soup and two cups might seem like a lot, but once it cooks down and softens up, you won't even hardly see where the kale is in the soup because you've got those potatoes and you've got those chunks of elk in there. Um, so I'd put that in there and then let that cook for another 15, 20 minutes prior to serving. And again, like I said, when you, you make this uh, Tuscan style elk soup or venison soup, whichever one you prefer, is to really add a little bit of that lemon zest and then some of that Parmesan cheese on there. And you can even make a Parmesan cheese crisp where you could take a nonstick skillet, um, put a little, melt a little butter in the skillet and then take some finely grated Parmesan cheese put it in the melted butter, don't touch it, and just put it kind of in a circle like you're making a pancake. And then cook that for like maybe two, three minutes and you'll smell it, it it'll get that kind of that, that buttery burn, cheesy smell. And then you'll just take that with a spatula, lift it up and then turn it over, cook it for another minute or so, take it off the heat, let it cool down. And you'll have this really cool like cheese pancake. And then you can take that and then break that off and throw that in the soup as well. Um, it's it's kind of a fun thing to do and, and a fun way to serve your dishes up to friends and family. So, all right, I think Dawn, I think I hit my three meals in, in one hour limit. You did, you did a fabulous job. I'm gonna share my screen real quick so I can share really- Oh, I forgot the cookbook, that's right. I, I plugged your cookbook, but thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hold on, let me get your- um, I'm gonna share real quick. Can you see that? I can see it. All right, everybody, thank you for attending. These are some um, images from Christy's website. You can find her nevadafoodies.com website right there, as well as where to find her cookbook if you're interested in some of her other recipes. Um, to think that in an hour you just meal prepped pretty much like anywhere from a week or two of meals. Totally. So yeah. That's impressive. Impressive. So on that note, um, if there are any other webinars, if you'd like to see certain recipes, if you want to see more of Christy, go ahead and email me and let me know. And then Christy's, it's nevadafoodies at gmail.com, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. If you want to reach out to her as well and thank her if you're looking for cookbooks or anything else. Otherwise, I think that about does it for the day. Thank you so much to the men and women who participated today. Christy, Andy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are always phenomenal and so much fun to work with. Hey, thank you, Don. We thank really you. appreciate it as well. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to to help share some of the passion that we have um, for wild game, for wild game cooking, uh, for conservation, for all of that and above. So we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day and a great rest of your weekend. Hey, Don, if you want to come over and help me do dishes too, I'm open for it. Oh man, dishes. <laughs> I get to eat while I'm, as I'm cleaning. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. All right, Don. Bye. Thank you, Thank you everyone.